Diolch de Pellewydd, and can I thank the Minister for her statement this afternoon, and I very much welcome the, the ability to actually have clear clarity now for our young people and for teachers as to know where they could be going and heading towards the end of this year. Um, I also have you know, with experience of having been taught in comprehensive fields of education and universities. I know there's a great deal of experience out there of the profession being able to do assessments like this, have external moderation, and to ensure that consistency and fairness applies across the piece for all subjects. So I think that's a very, very positive for us. I want to ask a couple of questions in relation to perhaps uh, the AS. We, we talked about A-levels, we've talked about GCSEs. What about the year 10s and the year 12s? And how would this impact upon their studies for the following year in 2022? So that they also know, and teachers know, that what their targets will be uh, for that examination that's critical for those groups of students. Uh, it is true that disruption is going to happen. Uh, I have full confidence in the blended learning approach, but we also need to look at for those assessments, and particularly vocational work, where there are centre-based assessments based upon practical assessments, where they have to be on site. How have you uh, sort of sorted out that arrangement to ensure that if there's disruption, those students who need to be on site for practical work will be able to do so, and those tests or assessments will be taking place. Can you also tell me clearly, in relation to the training of teachers, to ensure that they're fully uh, aware and have an understanding of how their role will be in this? But what I'm assuming is that when you talk about an externally set assessment, what will come, and an external market, what will come is actually, teachers may well be doing the marking based upon externally set marking schemes and that will be moderated by sampling. Whereas otherwise, there is a huge amount of work which will be required by the external examiners or external moderators to examine all and moderate all during that time. So there, there is a difference there. Can you just make sure of clarity is that they will be assessed by the teachers initially based upon an external uh, set of marking schemes, and they will then be sampled and moderated across Wales to ensure consistency there. Um, thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank you very much to David Rees for his uh, questions. I think what is really important is that we are uh, looking to design uh, a system that is familiar to teachers. Now is not the time to create new fangled uh, and new ways uh, of doing things when we all recognise the immense strain that individual teachers, schools and colleges are under at the moment. So uh, carrying out um, assessments, uh, tasks of this kind and continuous ass assessment, these processes are, are well known to schools and well understood by schools. So there shouldn't be, it sh there shouldn't be a need for a school to acquaint themselves with a completely new different system. The principles that we're talking about here are well known and well understood by our teaching, uh, by our teaching uh, workload. Uh, uh, workforce. With regards to practical examinations, uh, David, you are right. For some, for some vocational qualifications, uh, a, uh, the ability to demonstrate uh, your technical skill, uh, expertise, and your ability to undertake that role are, are a crucial part of gaining your accreditation uh, to, uh, to enter into a profession. Uh, we're very mindful of that, and you will be aware that those learners were prioritised uh, in the, uh, in the uh, late spring and the early summer of last year to get them back into college before anybody else uh, to allow them to complete uh, their studies. And we will work with our colleges uh, and our work-based learning providers to ensure that every step is made uh, to allow uh, students to finish and gain a qualification that allows them either to move on to further study or, into the, or on into the, um, or into the world of, uh, of work. Uh, with regards to training, uh, clearly there will be uh, a training need and our expectation is that uh, it's a question of um, uh, all hands to the pump in this scenario. So we would be expecting uh, our regional school improvement services as well as the WJEC to be able to provide training and advice to schools as to how they should uh, administer uh, any class-based assessments uh, and, as you said, any, mark any, uh, any marking schemes, not just for the uh, externally assessed, assessed assessments, but actually the entire moderating process and, and allocating grades, because that's a really difficult and challenging job to do. Uh, last year, uh, the criticism was that we did, you know, we didn't, and quite rightly so, you know, we didn't put in place 
that opportunity to provide that support for schools. Schools were left uh, on pretty much on their own to get on with it, and we need to learn the lessons and ensure that there is an infrastructure around schools this time to support the implementation, the opera operationalisation even of this uh, of this system. Thank you. Thank you. Hugh Aranka Davis. Thank you, 